Hello there programmers and welcome to another episode in our Flask tutorial series. Uh, I'm Chris Franklin, I'm your uh, instructor for the uh, for this course. Okay, so um, if you followed along in the tutorials already, you've seen how to set up a basic Flask application and you've also seen how to um, set up HTML templates and how to do template inheritance so that you can create uh, shells for your application that have widgets inside of them at, embedded as other HTML components. So we can create a pretty dynamic front end at this point and we know how to serve that front end. But what we haven't really dug into is how to build um, what is called a REST API. This is the back end of a web application and can also be used as a standalone in what's called a microservice framework. Okay, So Flash can be used to build a wide variety of uh, rest endpoints and what we do for those is we define HTTP methods that can be used to access the data in various ways. So that's what we're going to cover uh, this uh, episode is how to build a basic to do application um, just the back end of it no front end work here. Okay so I've already set up a project and I've installed Flask so what we're going to do is we're going to import Flask and um, I'm going to import uh, all the tools that we're going to need here out of the library. So first, of course, is Flask itself. And then I need um, JSONify, which we'll talk about later, as well as abort and uh, request. So these are all um, tools that we're going to be able to use to build out our REST application. Okay. As with every Flask application, we actually need to set up the, the app itself. And we do that here by passing in the name of the module that's being launched. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a an in-memory data structure that we're going to be working with. Now, usually when you build an, a web application, if you want to persist the data, you have to store it into a database. But we're not going to talk about databases just yet. We'll get to that in a later uh a tutorial lesson but for now what we're going to do is I'm going to create um, to do's and I'm going to create an array of dictionaries okay now these dictionaries are going can be used to represent what's called JSON the JavaScript object notation it's a method for us to send data across uh, networks in a pretty compact format. It's not the most compact, but it is uh, a standard across uh, current web applications. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set up an ID. We're going to create, um, let's call it a title. And um, I'm going to set up a UTF-8 string here. So you do the U in front. And then we're going to say, what's our first to do? We're going to learn Flask. Okay. And then uh, we'll set up a description for it. And, uh, oh my goodness, there we go. And uh, we'll do another UTF-8 string here. And let's say we're going to search YouTube. Oops, spell that right. YouTube uh, for the best videos. Okay, which are my videos, of course, right? Um, and then we'll say is it done and we'll start with false okay so pretty stra pretty standard pretty easy um, it's just a, a basic um, a, a, just a basic uh, dictionary of uh, names to values okay now we can create a second one I go ahead and copy this entire one make it a little bit easier for us we'll create a second one make sure everything's indented properly uh, and then we'll call this ID2. Um, the IDs are important. Um, in a standard database, you would have an identifier to actually represent each of these objects. We're going to emulate that here with these ID fields, though. Um, what should we call this one? Um, let's do something like uh, learn Python. Okay. Um, and then we're going to say instead of search YouTube for the best videos, we'll say search YouTube again. Okay. This is also not done. So that's it. That's enough for now, right now. We just start with two of those. Okay, let's get into the fun stuff. Let's actually start defining some of our routes. Okay. Um, so what we can do here just to verify that everything is up and running and that we're going to have no problems is we can define our, uh, our route for the 
for the index for the home. Okay, so all you have to do is define your index and return. Um, let's just do something like hello to do's. Okay, and then finally, we'll say if name equals main. Uh, we'll run app.run and I like to do just so that we don't have to restart the server while we're doing this uh, debug equals true okay so at this point we can click the little green button here and run this you can see everything is running um, now if I go over here into the terminal I can use curl so uh, hopefully you have curl installed because we're going to be using it quite a bit in this tutorial series here um, curl and then we'll do localhost and we're running on port 5000 and we'll just do the root and make sure that we get hello to do's back so there we go so we can see we're exercising this endpoint we can see that it's working and um, now we have everything we need here okay now for the actual lesson all right what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up another endpoint and um, we're gonna start actually defining the HTTP methods that are used to access these endpoints. So let's do app.route and then we'll set up a to-dos endpoint. And um, this is going, this is where things get interesting. So we're gonna set up an array of acceptable methods in here, okay? Um, and we're gonna do one method per uh, per function uh, it simplifies things quite a bit you can actually uh, this is an array so you can put multiple HTTP methods in here and use them all when we uh, call curl here we're calling curl localhost 5000 and and we're doing the index endpoint here what we're actually doing is we're, we're using the HTTP method get HTTP methods are a way for us to access the underlying um, lower level parts of the web framework of all of the web okay not just frameworks but the but the internet itself you use HTTP methods to signal what event you want to occur um, on the server okay on the web application server so when we use get what we're saying is get information okay send me back something so that's what the HTTP get is going to be so let's go ahead and just um, get all of our to do's and we can return and we're going to return this to do's object up here and the way we're going to do that is we're going to say JSONify and we're going to wrap this inside of another dictionary and we'll call this uh, object inside of here to do's and then we'll pass this in okay so um, I don't know if you noticed when I was uh, saving all of this I saved it a little early and ended up killing my debug loop um, because uh, you know it needs to um, needs to have all this stuff actually defined before you save so we're gonna have to hit play again to get everything started um, oh is that what I did let's see oh yeah it helps if I spell this is methods with an s and not just method so that's what that's what the problem is there okay there you go that's how you troubleshoot you just read the the error messages in there and it'll tell you exactly what the problem is so you can see we now have a get method at slash to do's if I come back over here to my terminal and now I hit get on um, slash to do's and I hit enter you'll see we now get um, that object back the to do's object with the array that we define above being passed back and that's it that's the basics of using HTTP gets that's all we have to do here um, but <clears throat> we don't have to just get the entire object we can also define so if we do app.route and we say uh, to do's again but this time let's take an integer and we'll say the to do ID okay and so uh, we're just gonna add one level onto this this is how you build restful API's is you you pass your identifiers as part of uh, as part of the path itself uh, and then we're also going to do um, get here oops I brought up the shortcut that's my fault there we go 
All right. So now we have a new get uh, as our method. We're going to do slash to do slash integer. Okay. So now we can say def get uh, a single to do, and we'll pass in the to do ID that we're defining above. Okay. Uh, now to get the to do, what we're going to do is we're going to use an inline accessor on that array and we'll say to do for to do in to do's i know that's a really confusing way to say it but um, that's what we want to do if to do id uh, equals to do id okay so that's an inline accessor for that array what we're what we're doing here is we're going through to do's and for each to do uh, you're going to define to do for each to do in the to do's okay so we're defining this is the object that we're passing out and then we're saying we use the same name but it is to do in to do's so each of these uh, dictionaries here and then we're going to check inside the dictionary we're going to check the id and see if it matches the idea that was passed into the url okay now what we do is we say if the length of to do which is this array that we just defined if the length is equal to zero we want to abort this with a 404 okay this is an http status code uh, default status codes are 200 for success 404 for not found okay so that's what we're going to do here we're going to say we didn't find anything the length of this is zero that means none of them matched and we have a 404 okay and then otherwise we're going to return and we're going to jsonify it again and we'll do this time we'll just do a single to do and we will pass in the first object there should only ever be one matching item but in case there's not we're going to return the first one we're asking for a single to do and that's what we're going to return okay let's go ahead and save this make sure everything is still running over here we can see the server automatically restarted after I saved so we can come back over here uh, we can do to do's slash one and we can see we get a single to do back search YouTube for the best videos learn flask okay uh, I can do the same thing I can I hit up on my command line to bring up the last command and I can say slash two and now you can see there it is we're getting uh, the second list learn learn Python the second in the list okay <clears throat> so that's get methods let's now look at another method uh, called post okay so gets are the way we re we retrieve data from the server a post is a way we send data to the server to save so we're gonna create new data inside of this array and the way to do that is traditionally with a post uh, post means that a body is sent with the data okay so let's go ahead and create our post endpoint and we'll say app dot route and um, to do's and we're going to leave this as to do's now you notice there these are the same endpoint the difference that we're going to run into here is we're going to say methods equals post oh and Fat fingered that all over the place, didn't I? Okay, uh, and and we're gonna do post. There we go. That looks better. Okay, so we're gonna hit the same endpoint, but now we're gonna define what happens when the method of the request is a post. And Flask knows how to handle these. We can put these into the same object up here, uh, into the same handler, and then have inside of here uh, grab the request and check the method type and do a switch inside based off of what method we're using but this is a much cleaner way of handling it in my opinion so this is the way that I like to create these these endpoints so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna now define a create uh, to do endpoint and inside of here if not and here's where we're gonna use another one of our accessors from above uh, or another one of our our globals we're gonna say request dot JSON or not a title in request.json okay <coughs> excuse me what this is doing 
is this is checking the request that comes into this endpoint. This is this is a shortcut to grab that request. And we're saying, is the request JSON? And if it's not, or if it is, and it doesn't have a title inside of it, we're actually going to abort with a 400. Now I said 404 is not found. 400 is incorrect request. Okay, It means that your request is malformed in some way. It doesn't meet the requirements of the endpoint. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now, um, what can we do here? Okay, so we can take and we can create a new to-do. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to create our dictionary. And we're going to say our ID is going to uh, equal. And we're going to take to-dos. We're going to take the last item. So we do a negative one to say we want the last item in the array. And we want the ID of the last item in the array and we want to add one and that's how we increment the IDs as we move forward um, we could also use UUIDs that's a really uh, common way in application development to do unique identifiers UUID is a unique identifier okay um, so uh, but we're not going to do that we're just going to use integer values it makes it easier to to for us to demo everything that we're doing here okay uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the title and the title is going to come directly from the request and since it's JSON we can just grab the title out of that um, out of that dictionary okay um, and then what else are we gonna grab here oh we need the description okay but the description we're gonna say is optional so let's do this a little differently request.json.get so instead of accessing it directly in in there, we're going to use the get method, um, and we're going to say get description, and we're going to give it a default value of not of a blank string, okay? Um, and then we're going to set done to false. It doesn't make a lot of sense for them to send a to do to us that is already done. So we're just going to automatically assume if you're sending us a to do it's not done okay uh, now all we have to do is we have to use this to do so we say to do's dot append to do there we go and then we can return a response and we're going to return the the to do that we just created so that they know that it was created uh, and then um, we're going to also set the status code so when you return from this function you can return the status code along with it and we're going to say a 201 201 unlike a 200 which is a success 200 201 means success and we created a new item for you okay so we're going to return the item and we're going to say 201 okay um, now we only have two more methods to really talk about um, so let's go ahead and do that. This is already turning into one of my longer videos, so uh, let's move through these pretty quickly. We're going to go map.route, and we're going to create um, now a new endpoint that is going to update an existing to-do. So we want to do the same thing we did above, where we take the integer of the to-do we want to update. Okay, And then um, for this, we're going to do our methods equals to um, post okay oh and this needs to be capital post <clears throat> so we're going to define update to do and we're going to say our to do id and so there we go that's that um okay now updating an existing to do this can get a little bit tricky this is probably going to be the hardest code to understand in the entire service that we're writing here the first thing we're going to do is exactly what we did above we're going to say our to do is equal to and we're going to do our array accessor so we're going to say to do for to do in to do's uh, if to do and we're going to say the id uh, is equal 
to the ID that was passed into the into the uh, the path. Okay, so now we're going to grab our to do, and then we have to do a series of checks here. Okay, the first check we're going to do is we're going to say, did we find any? Okay, if we didn't find anything, searching through the uh, data structure, we want to abort with a 404. Okay, exactly the same as we did before when we did our get on a single to do. Exact same code there. <coughs> Here's where things get different. Okay, so if not request.json. Okay, so it's similar to the post method, we want to make sure is this JSON that's being sent. If it's not, we want to abort with a 400. Okay. Also, we want to say if the title is in uh, request.json, uh, what else do we want to know? Oh, and the type of the request.json title is, let's see, and that type, um, oh, it, it cannot be equal to uni or if it's not Unicode. So we want to make sure it's Unicode that's being sent to us. We don't, we want to make sure we're not getting something crazy in here. Um, if it is, we're going to abort uh, with a 400. Okay. Um, I don't know why this shows up as a red squiggly line. That is actually a completely valid reference to Unicode. Um, hmm. Weird. Uh, PyCharm, you are wrong. Uh, this is the correct way to do it. Um, when I save it, you can see it's still running. Everything everything restarted properly. Um, squiggles. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're just going to have to live with a red squiggly line because that is how you check for Unicode. All right, so we're going to say if description uh, in request.json and the type of request.json description uh, is not equal to Unicode. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing twice there. Um, so we're going to check both of those. Uh, something that's important to know is that um, if we don't get JSON, this will actually short circuit here and we'll never do a, a type check on the actual object inside. Otherwise, we would be throwing errors by checking this first. Okay, so just realize there's a reason we're doing this in this order. So we're also going to abort with a 400. We could probably write a helper function to do some of this for us, but we can come back and, and talk about proper structure later. But um, this is so that you can walk through line by line and see exactly why we're doing the things that we're doing. Okay. Uh, next, uh, what else do we need to check? Oh, we need to check done. So if done is in the request.json and the type of request.json uh, d-o-n-e okay, is uh, da, 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 let's see, is not bool. How about that? Is not bool. We'll do. We'll use is not here. Okay. Uh, we're gonna also abort with a 400. So each of these, we're just we're walking through. We're checking to make sure everything that we're being sent is valid on the to do we're about to update. Okay. Now this is important to note here that we do short circuit these. I just want to reiterate that. If the title is not sent, we short circuit and we never check. If the description is not present, we short circuit and we do not check. If done is not present, and we short circuit and do not check. Okay, all of those, right? <clears throat> so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually update the objects. So what we're going to do is we're going to say to do zero, which is the object that we found up above. Okay. And we're going to set the title of that to do. And we're going to set this equal uh, to the request.json.get. Uh, remember, the get is how we get whatever is there. So we're going to grab whatever is being sent in the JSON, or we're going to set it back to whatever it was. 
Okay, does that make sense? Uh, we we grab the first we, we grab the item we found, we look it up, we find it, we grab its title, and then we set that title to either the title that was sent or back to its whatever the value was. Okay, so we can actually copy this and paste it a couple times and change the next line to description and then we can copy description and replace title in this line with description so here we go so we're gonna do the exact same thing for description and then we'll do finally done done oops I copied it twice done 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 there we go that's it title description done check if uh, check if they've changed if they haven't set them back to what they were then we return JSONify and we're gonna say to do and we're gonna give it back the object that we just found okay uh, tons of fun there and finally let's do one more endpoint and then we'll run through and test all of these and make sure just everything works as we expect it to um, and fix any problems that have come have creeped in here um, I'm hoping none but we'll see so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna do to do's and we're gonna say int and the to do ID but this time we're going to set the methods to delete there we go and define delete to do and okay so I'm gonna copy some code here just to save some time uh, I'm gonna copy this line we're gonna look up the to do same as we always do so we're gonna look it up we're gonna find it if the length is equal to zero we're gonna grab, copy these two lines from above paste those in here so if the length of the to-do is equal to zero we're gonna abort with a 404 okay otherwise we're gonna say to do's dot remove to do of zero so remove the object we found from the array and then we're gonna return JSONify and uh, let's just do um, results and say true all right, we're hard, we're hard, we'll hard code a success. We successfully deleted the object you wanted us to delete. There we go. Um, and I believe that's an entire application right there. Uh, we're pushing almost 30 half an hour for here. So let's test it. Let's make sure everything worked. Okay. So back in our terminal, we're going to say curl, and we're going to say uh, we're going to set our post. So we did we did a couple of things. We did a couple of endpoints here. Um, so we're we're gonna have to test the post. Yeah, let's do let's do the post. Um, and we're gonna set our header. So we need to set a header here. Uh, minus capital H. And we're gonna set the content type uh, to application json okay now this is important because if we don't say that it's json type it will actually fail and then we're going to send the body minus lowercase d i don't know why body is lowercase d but that's what it is i think it means data but anyway um and we'll set the title to um let's see title is going to be study rest sure why not Sounds great. Uh, and then we'll hit uh, localhost 5000 and to do's. Let's see what happens. Oh, I stopped. Why did I stop? What did I do? Oh, I saved it with an error in there. That's my fault. I, on the delete, I forgot to put the angle, the closing angle bracket here. So let's go ahead and do this again. All right, we'll restart everything. We'll rerun that. We'll hit up to rerun this line. We'll make sure everything worked. Oh, look at that. We have a new to-do with a description, done ID3, title, study rest. Okay, what happens if I come all the way back up and I just hit 
the curl get on to do's? Well, there it is. Uh, that item is now in the list of to do's. <coughs> okay, so that's how we post to that endpoint to add, to create that data. What about a put? Okay. Um, let's do, let's actually come up here. Let's do this again. Let's, let's, um, let's do the post again. Let's play with it and see if we can break it. Um, so I want to do a title of break me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually delete this block here where we pass in the header. Let's see what happens. What do you think is going to happen? We got a 400 bad request. This is what I was telling you would happen up here. So because in our our code up here, we check to make sure when we create that we're sending JSON, the way we tell it's JSON is with that header that's being passed in. Okay. So let's do let's do another endpoint. So we'll hit up a couple times. We'll come back to this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the post into a put. And we'll test that endpoint real quick. And then um, let's change the study uh, study rest to restful. Study restful. And we'll update to do's number three. Let's see what happens. We hit that. Method is not allowed. Did we do this right? Oh, look at that. We didn't. So if I do put here, I have to save that as a put. That is what I did wrong. Oh, and then look at that. Um, this is the problem with running this with everything in memory. Is um, We got a 404 in this case. So I changed this. I fixed the error I made earlier. I did my second route of updating. I did a post instead of put. It needed to be a put here to work. Um, but then it found a 404 because it didn't actually find item number three. If we come all the way back up here and to a curl on the to-dos, you can see item number three is missing. That's because it's in memory only. So when everything resets, the memory gets forgotten. It's, it's lost. So let's go ahead and do a post again to put that object back in there. All right, now we're back in there. Now let's go ahead and run the put again and verify that everything worked as we expected it to. Name Unicode is not defined. It isn't defined. Well, that's strange. I guess it's correct. This is not. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, you know what? I will. I will have to fix that, won't I? Um, anyway, let's try our delete. Let's make sure we can delete. Um, we can actually update something else here. Let's do this. Um, let's verify this works on a different endpoint. Let's say done is now true on three. Oops. We can't actually pass raw JSON objects in there either. We have to say we have to uh, lowercase T R U E. There we go. Look at that. Now if I grab the list, you'll see done is now set to true on that third object. Okay, so you can see updates work. Um I guess the version of Python I'm using doesn't use Unicorn code anymore. This is very sad. I used to use this all the time. Uh, okay. Um, let's try a delete. Let's see what happens if we delete stuff. So we're going to do the same thing. Um, the difference is uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to remove some of the stuff that's in here. So we're going to delete number three. Um, and we don't need a body anymore. We don't need a header anymore. All we need is X delete space with the localhost to do's three. Let's hit enter, result equals true. Let's look and see if it's in the list anymore. Nope, it's gone. Okay, well, we're well over half an hour. Um, aside from our little problem with defining Unicode, 
um, which I'll do another tutorial video on how to check if we're being sent Unicode back. Um, I'll, I'll definitely post that as the next video. Um, but everything else here uh, is, is how we operate with methods, puts, posts, gets, um, and deletes. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post it in the comments. Send me an email. Let me know um, if you have any anything you want me to cover in future tutorials. But uh, thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.